going to step off the land now. 50 years ago this July, the entire world held its breath, captivated by what's likely the most watched first steps in human history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landing and walking on the surface of the moon. But this isn't a story about what they did that July night in 1969. Four forward, just into the right level. This is about the spaceship that brought him there. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That Eagle is the lunar module, or LEM for short. On July 20th, 1969, LEM 5 on Apollo 11 brought two American astronauts from lunar orbit down to the surface of the moon for about 21 and a half hours and back again. Roger, Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. An estimated 530 million people witnessed that moment across the globe, and even though he wasn't in Houston, Mike Lisa was probably just as blue. I don't know, I was a mess. I'm saying, that, Jeep, is, is this thing going to make it? Is it going to land? Is it going to break apart? Is it going to falter? These guys, are they going to be all right? Mike was part of the massive team that built the LEM, a true blue spaceship, the only one ever to take humans from space to another world. And when I finally got in there and they're telling me that I'm working on the LEM, I, it all sort of come together and I says, oh my gosh, you know, I'm actually going to work on this unit that's going to go to another planet. This unit, the LEM, was proudly made on Long Island by Grumman Corporation. So proud, the company took out full-page ads in the New York Times and Washington Post six days after the moon landing, touting their accomplishment. They got the contract in 1962, a time when not a lot was known about space travel. That's Sam Coppell was a technical a editor on the program. And all we had done really was successfully shot one man up into space and brought him back down with the Mercury program. And it was going to be a long way between doing a Mercury capsule and having a vehicle go a quarter of a million miles to the moon and return the astronauts safely uh, to Earth. So the race was on, challenged by President Kennedy to get to the moon by the end of the decade. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. But the Apollo program needed its lunar lander. Teams of engineers and workers built the LEM on Long Island basically by hand, working out the kinks as they went along. We would take that thing, that device, that component, down to the machine shop and tell the guys, listen, you guys are going to have to mill out a new piece, make this piece this way, that way, this dimension, whatever else. And they would put it together and send it out for anodizing or whatever it had to have done to it. Bring it back to us the following day and retest it. And if it broke, we'd send it back. And you'd do that until you got it right. So this is the building where the lunar module was built. It's one of the original Grumman buildings here in Bethpage. At the time, it had a cleanliness level of a hospital operating room, but Grumman sold the building, and now it's part of a movie studio. We didn't know what the environment was like on the moon, so we didn't want to contaminate anything. Ross Bracco was a structural designer on the ascent stage of the LEM, the part that blasted the astronauts off the moon and back into orbit. If you went into the clean room, you had to walk through a tunnel. The tunnel had a big bag around it, so to speak, and there was a, a heavy vacuum associated with it so that it would suck all the lint off your clothing. Inside, people like Al Contessa, the thermal insulation guy, as he describes it, got to work. Yeah, right. Who, who thinks of becoming a thermal insulation guy? We never even heard of it. He was responsible for installing that crucial gold foil that covers most of the LEM. It's called Mylar, and it protects the astronauts inside from the harsh environment of space outside. But working on a moonship was kind of a happy accident. Al applied to Grumman off the street and was hired to be a cable manufacturer. And, you know, you put crimp pins on wires and did stuff like that. It was really boring. I mean, very boring. So boring that he actually put in his two weeks notice to leave Grumman. But on what was supposed to be his last day, Al changed his mind and asked to stay. So they put me in the upholstery shop. Another friend and myself went to this upholstery shop. We didn't even, we didn't even know Grumman had an upholstery shop. You know, uh, 
and we walk into a clean room and we see people in smocks, hats, gloves, crinkling up this material and we both looked at each other and we said, what the heck is this kind of a place? We didn't, you know, we had no idea. And we were getting ready to go to the door and the, the lead man came up to us, that's a really true story. And he said, guys, he says, this is not a bad job, give it a chance. He gave it a chance and was on the Apollo 11 launch pad a month before they blasted off, installing extra insulation in case Neil Armstrong decided to hover around the moon and find a better spot before landing. The first time we went up on the rocket was at night, coming into a caged elevator, like a construction site elevator, and then you just start the journey going up. And as soon as you start leaving the ground, the temperature gets cooler, and you're looking at this monstrous white cylinder, a behemoth, we called it. And it was just an amazing experience to look at this thing as you get up. And then comes the question of the LEM itself. What does it look like? It's not exactly the handsome twin or even distant relative of spaceships Hollywood has drawn up like the Millennium Falcon or USS Enterprise. At the time, the New York Times described it as ungainly but efficient. They referred to it like a bug. The, uh, the LEM was not aerodynamic. It didn't need to be because it was not exposed until you got into the vacuum of space. A bug was the, probably the, uh, the unanimous choice of, uh, of everyone. Uh, and eventually, that's how you would refer to it very often. What do you think it looks like? The LEM? Yeah. Well, you know, I, we used to call it a, look like a wrinkled sheet. You know, and it is, it, you know, and people f who first see it, you can see that when they look at it, they, you know, they want, they're probably saying to themselves, my God, this is a spaceship, guys went to the moon and that, but it's an acquired taste. That acquired taste had an impeccable record of success. Every single limb built for the Apollo missions did their jobs perfectly. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem even going above and beyond, acting as a lifeboat for three astronauts during the Apollo 13 near disaster. I felt fortunate that I was uh, involved in this, and it turns out, you know, it was, the, like I said, the best thing I ever did work-wise, and 50 years later, we're still talking about it, so that's, uh, you know, you can't beat that. Al, Mike, Sam, and Ross all now work at the Cradle of Aviation Museum on Long Island sharing their stories in front of one of only three lunar modules left on Earth that were designed to go to the moon. The museum's curator, Josh Stoff, calls it one of the most important machines ever built by man. And it's the only machine ever built that took human beings from one world to another. It was never done before, it's never been done since then. It's been 50 years since LEM-5 touched down and a lifetime since they worked on building it. But mankind's giant leap still doesn't feel like it was all that long ago. You talk about it every day, and now with this 50th coming up, I feel like I'm punching in at Grumman. It's like, it's incredible. I bought myself a telescope, and I do look up at that moon, yeah. And I say to myself, ah, I can't believe that I actually had something to do with this large piece of history. It's incredible. Reporting from Earth, Joe Tuohy, Fox 5 News.